Nutella Casilla, consultant in diabetes. I've been seeing so many patients with type 2 diabetes in my career in a different country, but when the patient come out from my door, I'm always feel disappointed because I didn't have enough time to spend with them to explain about this long-term condition. So I thought uh, that could be useful to record a series of uh, a video uh, that can bring all the information that uh, usually is very difficult to achieve when a patient with type 2 diabetes visits their own doctor. You see, this condition is one that more you know, better you can treat, achieve your goal and reduce risk of complication. You can find a lot of information about the diabetes on, on internet and website, but you need to be very careful because there are a lot of wrong information. I always advise my patient to go and check international base evidence website, like American Diabetes Association and Diabetes UK. They already have a good informa informational program that can be very useful. And today I wanted to introduce you to a short video from Diabetes UK that very nicely explain what is type 2 diabetes. There are two main types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. They're different conditions, but they're both serious. There are some other rarer types of diabetes too. What all types of diabetes have in common is that they cause people to have too much glucose in their blood. But we all need some glucose. It's what gives us our energy. We get glucose when our bodies break down the carbohydrates that we eat or drink, and that glucose is released into our blood. We also need a hormone called insulin. It's made by our pancreas, and it's insulin that allows the glucose in our blood to enter our cells and fuel our bodies. If you don't have diabetes, your pancreas senses when glucose has entered your bloodstream and releases the right amount of insulin so the glucose can get into your cells. But if you have diabetes, this system doesn't work. When you've got type 1 diabetes, you can't make any insulin at all. If you've got type 2 diabetes, it's a bit different. The insulin you make either can't work effectively or you can't produce enough of it. In both types of diabetes, because glucose can't get into your cells, it begins to build up in your blood. And too much glucose in your blood causes a lot of different problems. To begin with, it leads to diabetes symptoms, like having to wee a lot, being incredibly thirsty and feeling very tired. You may also lose weight, get infections like thrush, or suffer from slow healing wounds. Over a long period of time, high glucose levels in your blood can seriously damage your heart, your eyes, your feet and your kidneys. These are known as the complications of diabetes. But with the right treatment and care, people can live a healthy life and there's much less risk that someone will experience these complications. If you've got diabetes, you can find lots of information and support about living with it using our website and helpline. As well as campaigning for everyone with diabetes to get the right care, Diabetes UK fund research into all types of diabetes so we can develop new treatments and one day find a cure. I really like this video and I use it in my clinic uh, to explain patients with type 2 diabetes what is going on and this is done in a very nicely and easy way. Diet is a very important in the treatment of patients with type 2 diabetes. So today I'm very happy to introduce Rim. She's a nutritionist from Health Bank. So Rim, hi. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. How, How are you? important is to lose weight for patients with diabetes? Well, uh, weight management is very important for diabetes. Uh, so especially, for example, if they have a lot of fat on their waist, so they need to reduce their waist circumference. We usually measure that as well. If um, they lose like around 5 to 10% of their initial body weight, that's also great. That will improve their parameters. So weight loss can help them improve uh, their diabetes and um, it might as well reverse it in some cases, which is a great thing uh, so that they can go off their medication. 
and uh, will help them feel better about themselves psychologically as well. So there are a lot of benefits for weight loss, uh, not just for diabetes sake, for other factors as well. What patient with diabetes should they eat? Do they need to do a special diet? Yeah, so for if we, for example, take their food plate, there's a specific food plate for diabetics. Uh, when you look at it, it should be, for example, half uh, vegetables and fruits with the ratio of two fruits and five vegetables. And the remaining half is quarter protein, is, uh, of course, lean protein. So for exam example, chicken breast, lean meat, fish is very good. And the other quarter would be carbohydrates. So it can be rice or potato, but also in uh, small portions. And if they go for the uh, brown rice or brown uh, pasta or any type of whole wheat grains rather than uh, refined or white uh, grains. Okay, so what, what you are saying is a patient with the diabetes should be aware about uh, food. So the, the first uh, treatment actually starts in a supermarket when they go to do shopping. Yes. So, uh, for example, when a person goes to a supermarket to buy a certain product, they should look at the nutrition facts. It's very important, not only the ingredients as well, but also at the facts, the how much grams like they have in carbohydrates, in fats and in sugar. So they should look at fat, for example. It shouldn't, it should be like three grams to five grams that would be okay for sugar also five grams would be okay anything higher is considered high in fat and high in sugar so they should avoid um, also when they go for the ingredients it's good to look at uh, natural ingredients uh, avoid chemical food additives um, anything that um, is considered like a colorant is also not very healthy uh, can I ask you one thing? So I have a um, different patient that uh, uh, come and see me and they say they are uh, having a very healthy diet, but mm. they are struggling to lose weight. Mm. How can I help them? What is okay. wrong with this? So that's where portion control comes in. So for example, they should know how much uh, carbohydrates like rice to eat. Um, and you can measure with your hands or you can use measuring cups. Uh, they can also, if they want, for example, nuts, it's good to have a small handful of nuts. If you go for proteins, it's good to have 90 grams, which is equivalent to the palm of your hand. If you're going for oil, it should be the tip of your uh, index finger. So it's very important to know and understand portions and to be guided on how much you should eat as well. Okay. but. Um there is anything else they can do if i have a patient that is already doing this mm. what can increase the um, energy expenditure how yeah. can i help them to lose weight it's very important also um, not only consider your food intake as well as your output so it's just a, not just input it's also output so if you exercise for example that you will increase your metabolism and that will make you lose weight. We usually aim at 150 minutes per week. So they can do like uh, 50 minutes three times a week or even more if they like. And they can do anything they like, anything that would burn their, um, like increase their metabolism. So if they like swimming, they can go for that, walking, jogging, any type of exercise. If they can't leave the house, they can do some exercises at home there are many youtube videos nowadays so they can just follow that and do any type of exercise they like perfect thank you very much thank i'm you. sure that uh, our patient will find this very useful thank, thank you, you so much thanks for having me mm -hmm.